Hi, this is Robert. I'm the developer of the Better Geiger S2. And this is a fairly low cost radiation detector that works on a scintillator technology instead of a traditional Geiger tube. And until now, this was the lowest cost scintillator detector on the market. And recently I've got some questions about another one which has appeared. And so this video is just try to answer some of those questions and show the differences and what this can and can't do compared to my detector. So I'll set mine aside for now. This is a device. Um, it's quite a bit cheaper. The S2 is selling for $149 at retail right now. And this one is significantly less. I don't know the exact number, but you know, straight away, I have to say there is no manufacturer. There is no product name exactly. I just called radiation detector and no way to contact the people. So that's kind of disconcerting to me to start out. I don't think even in the manual there is any any contact information. So I don't know what you do if there's a problem with it or a question about it. But anyway, um, this is the box. I've already opened it up and done some things. That's why it's already on. I just put it in for, for, for showing what it looks like. Uh, it's got the USB cable and a little wrist thing and a manual, which has some strange things in it, but I won't go into the details. It basically talks about how a photomultiplier tube works, even though there's not a photomultiplier tube inside the is <coughs> inside this device. But anyway, um, this is what it looks like. Uh, everything's fairly straightforward. You've got a plastic enclosure. I've already taken the uh, the screw covers off here and taking these four screws out and I'll, I'll uh, show you why I did that in a second um, But this is what it looks inside. I can take the top off and yeah, there's an LCD screen and Here's a little board for you know handling the input power handling the charging or whatever um, There's a lithium-ion battery and a microcontroller and all kinds of pretty typical standard stuff from the electronics standpoint. And what you'll see on the back here is the uh, sensor itself. So I'm doing this part of the video before trying to look inside there in case I damage it. Um, I'll do some quick tests and I'll show how it performs and you know how it behaves compared to the better Geiger S2 and then later I'll try to take a look inside the actual sensor. But uh, I popped it open straight out of the gate because I wasn't sure where the sensor was inside. And now that I know that, I put a little mark here so that I can use some test sources and, you know, see kind of how it, uh, how it behaves under the same, you know, exposed to the same source at about the same distance. So one quick thing, I mean, Another straight out of the gate issue is that there's no audio except for the alarm, so you don't hear click, 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 like you hear with this detector. Um, the rate is fairly high now because I have some test sources kind of nearby, but this one you don't get any auditory feedback except for if it goes above the alarm. So that's one thing. I don't know. I like the clicks. I think most people do. So if you are interested in that, you should be aware that you don't get that. Um, feature. So yeah, the second thing, um, if I go in here, if I can change from dose to count rate, um, it's not super quick and easy. Now I'm in count rate, CPM counts per minute instead of dose rate. And I'll just put a test source nearby. And you'll see another problem right away. It maxes out at 9,999 counts per minute, which is not very high. And you know, if I do the better Geiger at sort of similar position or roughly the same distance, you'll see it's shooting way up to uh, much, much higher than that, even with this little check source. <laughs> and count rate's so high, it's like a steady beep because the click rate is so high, but here you don't have any any uh, sound like that. 
So that's another issue is that the count rate range is extremely limited. But I'll go back here to dose rate. Oops, I turned it off, wrong button. Okay, and then I'll get a different check source. So, menu. Back to microsieverts per hour. I'm gonna grab a cesium-137 source, which is kind of the typical source people use for calibration or, I don't know, basic tests. It's usually the most common sort of reference source. And so I'll put that right there, and the sensor's there, and the uh, S2 is over here. And I'll put them at about the same distance, five centimeters away. My caliper, I'll just do it kind of quick, but we'll be in the ballpark. It's about five centimeters. And it's about five centimeters. It's not perfect, but we're just getting rough, rough ideas here. Go back to dose with the better Geiger. And first positive sign is you see they agree pretty well. It's not exact, but close enough. Um, I already did this before in the, this one was a little bit low, but not, not too far off. And I checked the better Geiger against some other detectors. And so I know this, this number and the theory is all agreeing pretty nicely. It's a little low, but not too bad. So the important thing about a scintillator is that it needs to be energy compensated because um, it has much higher sensitivity to lower energy. So if this detector is calibrated to this energy, it'll work fine with cesium. But the important question is if if I take a lower energy source, how will it behave? So what I have also is a different check source. This is cobalt 57. Um, I believe it's about 122 keV mainly. Uh, I need to check that if I remember correctly, but it's a much lower energy than cesium. So I can basically do the same test. I'll check my distances again. Um, make sure everything's kind of lined up, more or less. Doesn't need to be perfect. But they're now both about five centimeters away. And you see the problem. The better Geiger is taking that low energy into account, and it sees basically smaller energy deposition, smaller signal from each event. And it sees that and says, okay, we know that this is a low energy gamma, so we don't need to assign it too much dose weight. And we can take the count rate from that and correctly um, get the get a dose rate out, factoring in the lower energy. Whereas with this device, it's clearly not energy compensated. So while this is giving close to si uh, seven microsieverts per hour, this is giving 370. So we're like, you know, 50 times overestimating the dose rate. So, you know, that's a really, really serious problem because in most situations, you're not measuring cesium-137 in a realistic environment, and most of the time it's lower energy, so background radiation tends to be lower energy. Um, any realistic situation where you're trying to measure some unknown uh, spectrum of, of radiation is almost always lower energy, so this is going to be very dramatically overestimating, you know, 10, 20, 30, 50 times too high, and so you really can't trust that number. So that's the main issue with this device that I see. Um, and then one final test I'll do is with a beta source. So this is a pure beta radiation source. And this is an, an it's not an energy compensation question, but if you want to measure dose, and this claims to be a dosimeter, and this claims to be a dosimeter, but it's not, I would not call it that because it's not really able to measure dose properly. Um, but when, you, when your dosimeter is picking up beta, it's generally overestimating because it cannot distinguish between a beta and a gamma. And so it, it thinks it's, it's exposed to a bunch of dose when in reality the, the beta is not, you know, it's not a penetrating radiation the way gamma is. So it, it should really be blocked if you're, if you're measuring dose unless you're doing something really exotic and specialized. So I can put that pure beta source on the better Geiger sensor and a few do make it through. It's not 100% immune to beta. Um, it does pick up a little bit, 
but you see the dose rate kind of goes up a tiny bit, but, but really nothing too major. So, you know, if you have a lot of beta around, it might catch a few of them, but it's not going to give you anything, anything crazy. Whereas if I put that next to this device, which has a lot less plastic around the sensor, as you saw, so those beta can, can for one penetrate more easily because there's a little more plastic and stuff shielding it here. Uh, in addition to that, it's not energy compensated. So it doesn't, know the difference between a low or high energy so if some low energy betas come in it's going to treat them all like a high energy gamma the way we saw with the cobalt 57 low energy gamma source and you see now this is about six seven microsieverts per hour so it's again 20 times higher than this one so so yeah you get these um if there's beta nearby you can really have a dramatically overestimated dose rate again which can cause you to sort of have um, doubt about the number if you're not too familiar with, you know, that that sensitivity. So two major issues with this device to be aware of. Um, despite the lower cost, uh, it has, has serious problems to be aware of. So that's my quick um, set of test measurements for these two devices to highlight some of the differences and how energy compensated is important for measuring dose rate. Um, I also didn't show it on camera, but if I go to the counts per minute here um, with the cesium source in the middle, uh, for the same dose rate and the same exposure, this is getting about four times lower count rate for the same dose at the sort of same distance. And that's because of the very small, this is already a fairly small sensor and allows a much higher range. Um, this measures from zero to 100 millisieverts per hour. and this one claims to measure zero to 10 millisieverts per hour. So this has a 10 times higher maximum range and it's also four times more sensitive. So the count right here under the same cesium source is about four times more. Um, so it's as a result, faster re to respond, you know, faster to find sources nearby and stuff like that. So uh, pretty big differences in the specs and, and the behavior and pretty big concerns for measuring dose with this device that you should be aware of if you're considering buying it. So that I think is all the quick tests I wanted to show. Um, cesium, cobalt 57, maxed out count rate, no clicking, high beta sensitivity, no energy compensation. These are the, the things I have written down that I wanted to show with these tests. Um, and now I'm gonna end this part and I'm gonna start taking apart the sensor and see what I see. So I'm back after some work with the, with the sensor itself. Um, like you saw before, it was connected there. It looked kind of like this. It was a little bit glued on. It had the wires sticking out. Um, as I said before, it was epoxy potted, but it was a very soft epoxy upon further inspection. And so I was able to cut this thing away and kind of scrape away at all the soft sort of material that was that was sealing it up and without damaging it really I, I could get into this crystal and then the photo sensor on top and then the two wires coming out so you see it's pretty small as expected um, it's about 4.7 by 4.7 by yeah by four point something so if you factor in the white coating, it's probably in the ballpark of three by three by three millimeters cubed for the actual crystal. And I'm not sure the material, but um, I would have to guess it's probably cesium iodide. And the two wires are going to this photo sensor, which I don't really recognize. Um, before I disconnected it from the board, I checked the voltage and it was getting 27.5 volts which is a little lower than what silicon photomultipliers usually take. So I'm not certain, but I think it could be a PIN diode or some other, something else besides a silicon photomultiplier. But again, I'm not sure. If someone recognizes this component, feel free to give some information in the comments. But whatever it is, it's, it's a basic small sensor, and that's what it looks like. So later I'll try to reseal that and put it all back together. But... This pretty much concludes my kind of teardown of this device and my evaluation of it. 
Um, I went through all of the, the limitations, the problems with measuring dose accurately and other things. Um, I'm obviously biased and this is not quite as cheap, but for $149, you get something which has a higher range, four times, uh, 10 times higher range, four times higher sensitivity. Um, I personally prefer these having more buttons so you can more quickly change settings and access things and you're not limited to the strange count rate display issue and other things. So that's, uh, yeah, I'm biased, but that's my, that's my comparison. And I, I definitely cannot recommend this, this device. Um, but yeah, if you want mine, go to www.bettergeiger.com. And if you like this video, uh, this is kind of content you're interested in, please comment and tell me and tell me what, what kind of things you want to see. I do plan some more videos. Um, this was about two simulators and I think probably next I'll try to do more in depth about some of the physics and, and what this, how the sensors behave and what that means. So more general than just looking at one specific device, but, uh, tell me what kind of things you're interested in and I'll try to steer the content that direction. Thanks.